Yeah, I, I was just going to follow on with Phillips. Um, I've been out of high school for several decades now. And during that entire time, I maintained the only thing useful I learned in high school was typing. <laughs> every, every other course I took, I would have learned on my own uh, at university or in my uh, extra reading. And I had the experience a number of years ago of, of finding some colleagues who were two-fingered typists and were monopolizing the limited keyboards that we had in our research group. And I convinced them that they really did need to go to typing school, and they did. And they learned how to type with all 10 fingers. It's, it's a really important skill. My own daughter learned to type at the age of about four and five on a, on a small workstation. And she now types at a, a very low error rate at close to 100 words a minute. Mm. She's also a classical pianist. Um, but so she has a great deal of finger flexibility. But it is an important skill. I also fully agree with Philip that it's really important for your productivity to use the same kind of editing everywhere. Um, I had the experience a number of years ago of reviewing a book uh, for an author that I'd been in communication with, and we decided that what I would do was to take his PDF file and use Adobe Acrobat, uh, which had the ability to click a, at a point in the document, it would pop up a little box and you could type in remarks. And so instead of uh, writing marginal notes uh, and scanning the, the text back in again, I sent these marginal notes. And it had the nice feature that you could e extract the notes themselves and send them uh, in an email attachment, and he could then load them back in again. And that was certainly useful from his point of view, and it made it easy to see where my comments were rather than saying page 23, line 17. But it was so painful uh, to get the text into those little boxes because the editing was just so crippled. Mm. Uh, in, in, in an editor like Emacs that I routinely use, if I have long technical words in a document, I have for decades have been in the habit of typing the first two or three characters followed by escape slash, which is Emacs's auto completion. And it starts searching at the current point in the current buffer in both directions. If it doesn't find an expansion, it moves into the other buffers I happen to have open, one of which might be a spelling dictionary, for example. Uh, and it fills in the word. And so with relatively little typing thought, uh, I can have long words in, in prose and also in program names and in, in variable names and function names and computer software uh, without it being a burden. Uh, and it results in much more readable code. So I think it is important to, to learn one's tools and, and probably the, the text editor is the most important tool to use on a computer even before you start learning to use a web browser. Uh, yeah, I use sometimes your the the finder. I think you wrote a nice small program finding double the long time yeah. ago, maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. DW. Yes. Uh, I, I mean, I might just comment that as part of my work, both on, on authoring documents, uh, but also in maintaining a huge bibliography archive, is I have a menu in Emacs that runs a number of different tools that checks for heuristic, heuristic um, syntax checks in BibTeX files, that does the limiter balance checking, searches for double words, and so on. And uh, that's and also runs a parser, uh, because I, in the 90s, I wrote an article in Tugboat that laid down a very rigorous grammar for what BibTeX looks like. Uh, and that's been enormously useful, because I can uh, pretty much guarantee that uh, with relatively few keystrokes on my part, just pulling down a word uh, in a menu. For example, show braceable authors is one function. It looks for author names that have uh, potentially need bracing. For example, um, Johannes Brahms and Johannes van Brahms. If the fan is with a lowercase v, Bibtech doesn't need bracing. If it begins with an uppercase v, it does. And so a human really has to look at that and decide uh, which of the forms is needed. And Emacs can find those very, very quickly. It's, it's just an instant uh, of display. And so that's been very helpful in keeping the errors down in, in the bibliography archives. And it just saves a lot of work. So things I do routinely, um, uh, I, I absolutely minimize the work I do 
when I, uh, I've made a point of having standard headers in most of the files I release on the web that have author and version and date and information and also checksums. And so I have a single key on my keyboard that updates the version numbers and the checksums. So it's very, very little work to maintain this. And it, I think it helps in identifying which version people have and, and so on. <laughs>